That was the scene in California's Mojave Desert five years ago. Our historic first view of the newcomer's ship. Theirs was a slave ship carrying a quarter million beings bred to adapt and labor in any environment. But they've washed ashore on Earth with no way to get back to where they came from. And in the last five years, the newcomers have become the latest addition to the population of Los Angeles. I need a scientist. Come on in. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you busy? Well, I'm a little behind at work. I was just uh, finishing up some genetic typing. Uh, what can I do for you? See, we got this new ramrod commissioner with more college degrees than brains who's ordered this stupid test on everyone to see if we're crazy. Hell, I could have phoned that one in, right? But it's mandatory. You see, you know, I've answered a few of them, but uh, I don't want to embarrass myself. I figure you being a scientist, you could give me some idea, you know, what they, they want to hear, sort of. Psychological evaluation. How fascinating. Fascinating? It's a bunch of bull. Oh, I don't know. This one's interesting. Would you rather A, walk your dog, B, clean your desk, or C, make love? I mean, I've seen how messy your desk is, and you don't own a dog. <sighs> this was a bad idea. Bad? I'm sorry. I'm a biochemist, not a psychologist. There are no right answers. Just be honest. It's a good chance for you to learn about yourself and for others to learn about you. Hey, I do my job. Nothing else should matter. Matt, it's only an evaluation. <sighs> yeah, but if they find out you tie your shoelaces wrong, they, they ship you off to another division, you're behind a desk, you This is Kathy Franklin. Hell, it's... <laughs> I'll be right there. Trouble? That was my service. There's been a break-in at the lab. I've got to go down there. Well, you want me to go with you? Oh, go with me? Why? Well, it's kind of late and it's a crazy town. Well, thank you, Matt, but I can take care of myself. Besides, I'm stronger than you are. 
I didn't mean you needed help. But I wouldn't mind the company. Right. Yeah. I'd rather face a burglar with a gun than this thing any day. You can go home, Frank. Professor Pettit, all your work. And all my animals. I tried to have you paged to tell you not to bother. Everything is under control. Is your alarm hooked into the police? Yep. I got the 459 just as I was dunking my glazed twist. The boys in blue just left. I'm Jeffries. Sykes, Central. You boys from Hollenbeck get all the messy stuff. Yeah, we're usually cleaning up after you lazy bums. <laughs> and speaking of lazy, what are you doing here? Oh, uh... Matt came as a friend. Ah, good thing. Hate to think the department pulled two of us off donut duty. What do we got here? Blood. SID's on the way. Not human. It's rodent. I rely on them heavily for my cerebral research. He's a behaviorist. What? A mice and maze doctor. There's enough disorder here without you adding to it. Sorry, Doc. Evidence. Uh, what's up with Doc? <laughs> Eggheads. <laughs> if you don't equal MC squared, they flip. Hey, yo, Jeffries. I think you can get a nice, clean lift off of this. Not as good that would do. It belongs to Bobo, a chimp. The extenuated phalanges indicate that. Chimps have long fingers. Oh, yeah, right. Now, if you'd all quite finished, I'd like to clean up my lap. Sorry, nobody's cleaning up anything till SID gives this place the once over. Mm. You guys are regular Miss Congeniality. What are all these files doing here? Uh, I'm sort of behind and Grazer lowered the boom. We're babysitting paperwork today. An order I'm doing my best to ignore. George, what the hell have you done with our data sets? It'd be easier to peek under the Pope's skirt than to pull priors out of your computer files. I coded them, reorganized them logically, cross-referencing the A and B members with the mainframe data sets. That way I can enter any data set from any file. I'm surprised to see you using the system at all, Matthew. That's quite a departure from your normal behavior pattern. George, you've been regurgitating this psychobabble for three weeks. Put a straitjacket on it. A psychobabble? <laughs> it's fascinating. And very advanced for humans that you have a science devoted exclusively to analyzing what makes you talk. <laughs> Tick. And psychology is a bunch of frustrated thumb suckers who think the root of all the problems in the world is that you hate your mother. Oh? You... You hate your mother? <sighs> no, George, I don't hate my mother. But I'm beginning to hate you the way you screwed up this computer. What are you looking for? Oh, there was a break in last night at Kathy's lab. The perps tore the place up pretty good. Let some lab animals go. Animal rights activists? I don't know. I'm just looking for similars. This isn't our case, is it? Well, I, it's just, you know, Kathy's involved. And... Oh, Kathy? Yeah. She um, asked me if I'd look into you, it. Did you seen Kathy? What? Yeah, I, she's just a friend, would you? Uh, officers, uh, your attention, please. Thank you. Uh, in conjunction with the written personality profiles I trust you've all completed, the department has decided to give one-to-one -one stress evaluations to all of the field officers. Dr. Marcy Wright, the department psychologist, will be administering the tests. Not tests, explorations of your value systems, how you relate to each other, to the job, and to yourselves. It's a great way to help our brotherhood serve the community better, according to the departmental memo I got. <coughs> Come on, George, let's go get some coffee before we have a group hug. Oh, excuse me, Detective Sykes. Oh, excuse me. While I'm certain it's just an oversight, yours is the only personality profile I've yet to receive. Yeah, look, I could tell you my dog ate it. It got lost in the wash, whatever. Uh, the truth is, I didn't finish it. Uh, I think it's stupid. Well, I can understand how you feel, but it's still a requirement. Right, so you can tell me I misplaced my aggression? Actually, Matthew, the clinical term is displaced aggression, in which latent hostility is directed at a subject not associated with the initial anger. I got your latent hostility. Exactly. You must be Detective Francisco. Yes, I am, and I trust you did receive my profile. As a matter of fact, I did. But is there something wrong? I, I answered each question. Well, I'm afraid you over-answered each question. 
A multiple choice is just that. You gave me an essay on every possible response. Well, I wanted to be thorough to give you a deeper insight into who I am. Well, I appreciate your enthusiasm, and you've obviously done your homework. I don't want answers from Young, Freud, and Dr. Ruth. I want answers from you. And it's present for me, profile's unusable. Certainly, there must be some conclusion about me that you can derive from this profile. Well, Detective, I just as soon reserve my judgment until you read it. No, 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 you were going to say something. What's wrong? Dr. Wright just said that I have an insatiable need to influence the situations around me. Insatiable need? <laughs> Congratulations, George. The doc just called you a control freak. <laughs> control freak? pushing paper I've had enough do you realize that in psychological terms control freak translates to anal retentive oh. if she had any knowledge of science whatsoever she would know that anal retention in newcomers is a physiological impossibility sour grapes George this morning you thought that psycho stuff was the greatest Sykes Matt Kathy I'm between meetings so I have to make this fast I just wanted to call and thank you for going with me last night oh, don't mention it uh, any word on that break-in? Well, yes, that's why I'm calling. Detective Jeffries is sure that it was a protest. Protest? Animal rights activists? Luckily, we found most of the animals in the building. We're going to be late. Uh, I have to go, Matt. I'm sorry. Thanks again. Uh, yeah, bye-bye. So it was the animal rights activists. You listening in on my phone conversations again, George? You know, that's all tied in with that anal stuff. It's not anal. It's oral. Just doesn't make sense. Makes perfect sense. Newcomers have acute hearing. I could hear. Not your ears, the animal rights activists. Why would they go to all the trouble to break in to free the animals and then not release them outside? How could Jeffries believe that? Well, if it bothers you so much, why don't you call Detective Jeffries and clear it up? Detective Jeffries, please. Yeah, I'll hold. And then having freed the animals, why would they go ahead and trash the lab? I guess it would depend on what was in the lab. Test tubes, uh, electrodes, files scattered all around. Mice through mazes stuff. And uh, something called Project Dart, D-A-R-T. Maybe I'm crazy, it just seems weird. Uh, nothing to wet your pants about, George. Celine! You're right, George, you're, uh, you're not a control freak, you're out of control. Right. Good night, gentlemen. Don't let the psychologist see that. I said Jeffries, Detective Jeffries. You sure? Okay, thanks. Matt? Hollenbeck Division, they... They don't have a Detective Jeffries. See what you get for playing with butane and nails? Sorry to keep you guys waiting. At least you had company. You know, Lois, you've been working too much. I'm saving for a trip to Hawaii. I figured if I put away a dollar for every stiffs and intestines that I drain, I should be lying on a beach by next April. You're a terribly romantic woman. At least I have my dreams. Which is more than I can say for you, John Doe. The Midnight Boys found him downtown. Cause of death? Somebody emptied a nine millimeter into his chest. 
You can play connect the dots, but it's not a pretty picture. And Darko. No ID, no clothes, no nothing. Stripped clean. He was dead before he was dumped downtown. One weird thing, though. I found traces of gunpowder in the wound. Weird, the guy's Swiss cheese. Yes, but the powder I found was fresh, not spent. Let's get a look at his face. We'll try and get a match from the mug books and see if he had a criminal record. George, he already has a prom date. You're kidding. No, Detective Jeffries, you sure? No, I'm not hard of hearing. Butthead. Matthew, we got an ID on the John Doe in the morgue. A widower named Marcus Byer, chemist from Loma Linda. Get this, George. There wasn't even a police report filed on that lab break-in. Well, maybe the other detective procrastinates with his paperwork as much as you do. You're controlling, George. Matthew. I understand our job is to find answers, but to these questions, not about your phantom detective. George, it doesn't even bother you that there could be a guy out there pretending to be a cop? What bothers me is that we have a case, a murder case, and that there are only questions and no answers, and the only thing that you care about is a, a break-in in a lab that is none of your business. Look, I care, George. It's just the fact is we get shootings here every day. Not like this. Somehow I know this man. You sure? Pardon me, Detective. I don't mean to Excuse interrupt. me. Is he always so preoccupied? Well, George, he's a rock of Gibraltar. He's just having a bad day. By the way, I still haven't received your personality profile. <sighs> I start my evaluations today. Yeah, well, procrastination is one of my biggest problems. I can see that. Make sure I get it. <sighs> to submit myself as your first evaluate. I find the key to being in a position of authority and leadership is establishing a relationship of respect with the men. And you're secure in your leadership abilities. Absolutely, like a newborn in the arms of his mother. You know, Captain, it's not uncommon for people in your position to experience feelings of doubt about their leadership ability. Me? <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> I can't do that. I mean, uh, no doubts whatsoever. <clears throat> Come on. Somebody get these wood chips away from me. You know how much cellulose the pod needs. Don't want it to fill up with mucus. So eat those wood chips, Mom. Could we please get back to the game? Mmm. Tennessee Avenue. I think with the house, the rent is $60. 70 I only have 30 I'll Give you the rest when I pass go. If you take the garbage out before you go to bed, we'll call it even. Deal. Wait, wait, wait. I'm afraid there's nothing in the rules about paying debts with garbage removal. It says, right here, if any player at any time George, is unable... George, what? Taking the garbage out is worth more to me than $40 of play money. But I am the banker, and as such, it is my responsibility to enforce the rules. Don't have a heart's attack. I'll mortgage reading railroad. And that's $100, $40 for your mother, and $60 for you. Go ahead, Emily. <laughs> oh, boardwalk. <laughs> That's $2,000. With a red room. A red room? I thought those were hotels. A red room. Maybe all that money's driving Dad crazy. I'm gonna turn in. Come on, Em. Buck, we're not finished with the game. It's We're all broke. You own everything. I don't own the utilities. I think that's enough fun for one evening. Fine. No one wants to play. No one wants to play. Well, can you blame them, George? 
Ever since that psychologist told you to redo your evaluation, you've been unbearable. I have not been unbearable. Maybe I have. Something wrong? No. Yes. I don't know. I don't know if something is wrong or if it's me. Maybe my mind is just playing tricks. What kind of tricks? Do we know a human named Marcus Spire? I don't think so. Why? He was murdered yesterday. For some reason, I can't get his face out of my mind. Hey, Kathy? Matt, what's up? Have you ever noticed that Detective Jeffries hanging around the lab before? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Why, is there a problem? Oh, no, it's probably just my cop curiosity working out to you again. I'll see you. Oh, you forgot this. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that shrink at work's been itching to get me on the couch. Boy, is she in for a big disappointment, huh? Matt, you're too modest. I was a little short of time, but I tried to be thorough. Question number six was quite enlightening, that you'd rather be at home alone than at a party with your friends. That says a lot. You read this? Well, of course, you... What? <laughs> Terrific. Next, you're going to be coming over reading my mail? If you didn't want me to read it, then why did you leave it? I didn't leave it. I forgot it. I thought you wanted me to read it. I wanted your advice, not for you to invade my privacy. Matt, if you're concerned about your privacy being invaded, then I think we should talk about it. I've got a shrink at work who wants to talk. I don't need one at home. Humans. Jane, instead of a John, but we've got another dope. So it looks like our boy? Everything's the same. Multiple gunshot wounds, no ID, killed someplace else and then dumped here. Unspent gunpowder? I'd have to run some tests to be positive, but it looks like there's traces of it, especially under the fingernails. Like she was dragged through gunpowder? I just tag them near the detectives. Hey! Want an up close and personal? I'm telling you, the guy who ran was Jeffries. I know it. You listening to me, George? Yes. You're saying that this man might be tied to these murders? I don't know if he's got anything to do with this case or he's just checking me out. I'm going to get to the butt end of this dog. SID's got a tag on your second victim. It's all here. Bingo. Victim's a 44-year-old physical therapist. Last name Russell, first name... Amanda. What, your, your mind reader now, too? It's a problem, George. It's nothing. You've been acting like you've been sucking sour cream. What's going on? I'm not sure. Come on, you recognize the first victim, now you know the second one's name? What? Are you holding out on me? I don't think so. You don't think so? What the hell's that supposed to mean? Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. Detective Sykes, I want to thank you for turning in your profile. 
Oh, yeah, well, I don't want you to think I'm crazy. No, of course not. But I look forward to finding out for sure. I have time for an interview right now. Any takers? Uh, well, thanks, but uh, we've got our own lunatic to strap down here. I would. I would like to talk now. Everything is confidential. Absolutely. I fear I am suffering from the very anxieties you were brought here to expose. I'm not here to expose, but to help. What anxieties are you feeling? I'm distracted and overbearing at home, preoccupied and short at work, and I, the control freak, am unsure as to why. How long has this been happening? The last few days. It's this case that I'm on. The faces of the two victims. I can't seem to get them out of my mind. I feel I know them, but I don't know how. Dostoevsky once said that every man deals with three kinds of truth. The kind he shares with his friends, the kind he shares with himself, and the kind he shields from his innermost soul. There are ways to see behind the shield. I don't Right, Zach, thank you. Now listen, Rosa, I don't want to hear you Hey, George. Spot's hardly looked shrunk. How'd it go? She wanted me to try something, but I refused. Matthew, what do you know of hypnosis? <laughs> What's the drumstick, George? You're I'm getting sleepy. I am serious. I saw it in a nightclub once. The great Sebastian hypnotized the guy from Cedar Rapids. Every time a bell went off, he was squawking and waddling around like a chicken. Never did get him to lay that egg, though. So he controlled this man's mind. <laughs> On the ship, the holy gas allowed the overseers to control our minds. But unlike your man in the nightclub, there was nothing funny about it. No. I will not let anyone control me again. Here. I want these and the rest on your desk processed before you leave. Sir, we have a double murder. Had a double murder. That case is closed. Closed? You heard me. Just like that. Look, I don't like it either. I have no choice. Nothing closes that easy. All right, drop it, Sykes. Grace, Captain. Hey. Who's jerking your chain? I guess I am. Well, if it isn't Detective Jeffries. Sorry about impersonating a cop, but you caught me by surprise, and I get paid to think fast. I bet you do. What were you doing at the lab? Yeah. What the hell's going on? All right, can it, Sykes. It's out of our hands. Sorry. National security matter, need to know. National security, what are you, CIA? FBI? NSA? Doesn't matter, George, I've dealt with these guys. And the ones that don't talk are up to no good. Sykes, this comes from way above, top floor. We're out of it. Don't worry, I'll see that this matter does not leave this office. Are you saying that you want us to forget about two murders, pretend they never happened? That's exactly what they're saying, George. Uncle Sam's up to some dirty games, and they want it all swept under the rug. It's over. Sykes. Yeah, especially for the two people lying in the morgue. Look, I can understand your concern, but please, you're just gonna have to trust that these murders will be fully investigated. Oh, I'm not worried about the investigation. But I have a friend at the lab, and if anything happens to her, I'm coming after you personally. Well, let's go. I am hopeful, detective, that you will honor our jurisdiction in this matter. I hear you loud and clear. Big Brother's watching. Little boys in suits playing games while people die and Grace just rolls over. Matt, I don't like it either, but it's a federal matter. I'm sure they have the reasons. Yeah, Uncle Sam doesn't want to get caught with his shorts around his ankles. Oh, there you are. I found something on our lady victim. Knew you'd want to see it. That won't be necessary. We've been... What do you got? Our butcher boy left a calling card this time. Newcomer tissue. Thought you guys should know. Keep this under your hat? Hell, I'll keep it under my pillow. I've got a date. Matt, we have been removed from the case. It's closed. Yeah, maybe for the clowns upstairs, but not for me. 
What about you, George? Don't you want to know about all those faces dancing around in your head? Yes, of course I do. Well, then I'm going to run an idea on this. No! Matt, I want to get to the bottom of this just as much as you do. But if your big brother is watching and you go to SID, we'll not only be off the case, we'll be off the force. There must be another way. This should tie us into the newcomer tissue catalog at the lab. Just be a second. Look, Kathy, uh, about the profile tests, I've been doing a lot of thinking, and uh, I guess I sort of overreacted. It's OK. Don't worry about it. Well, it's just that I... Rather be alone than go to a party with your friends? <laughs> now, here it is. The tissue belongs to a newcomer named... Silas Marner. Well, you know this guy, too? Yes. We were in quarantine together, Camp 7. It was a military facility they mothballed back in the early 90s. Not a pleasant place, from what I've heard. We both spent time in a hospital ward soon after the crash. We had cumle kula. Well, like pneumonia. That's strange. Must be some kind of mistake. What? Well, if this tissue belongs to your killer, then it's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. These are the remains of those who died in quarantine. You guys packed them in like sardines. Matthew, it is not by choice these brethren were interned in empty oil drums, shoved in like so much garbage. It smells sweet. It's Glahib, preparation solution to aid the departed on their journey to Salim. Ah. Silas Marner in here, George. The record said that he died five years ago in quarantine. This doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense. Big Brother can make anybody they want look dead or alive. But why? There's only one person who can tell us that. You know the victim's faces. You were at Camp 7. It's all inside your head, George. You're the only one who can take us back. You're fighting me, George. No one can take control of your mind. You will remain in complete control. Now relax. Feel your breath go in and out. Feel your heart's beating. You are relaxed. Let the tension drain from your body. Let it flow from your spots to the tips of your toes, out and down through the floor. Are you relaxed? I want you to go back, George. Back to quarantine. Back to Camp 7. Go back, George. Go back to when you were sick. We weren't sick. We were made to appear that way to separate us. What do you see, George? The Red Room. 
Who are you? No, you are Dart 4. Dr. Byers, increase the hallucinogen. You are Dart 4. He has incredible strength. If we could only control their minds. You are Dart 4. You are Dart 3. Prepare your weapons. Take aim. Kill him! We must control their minds. Who are you? I am Silas. No, you are Dart 3. You are Dart 4. Say it! I am Dart 4. Dart 4, come over to the target. Dart 4, can you see the target? Yes. Fire. Dart 4 has an ethical imprint we can't override. Dart 3, kill him. Who was in charge of this, George? Who was trying to control you? We found the one. Him, drug him. See that he remembers nothing. Place him back into the internment population. Who was it? The man with the dark lens. Silas beat us to the party. Yes. Looks as though Pennant gave him quite a struggle. Huh? Let's see what he was trying to take with him. George, data disks. Let's see what's on him. D-A-R-T, Defense Alien Research Training. Pettit, Amanda, Marcus. They brainwashed and used you like guinea pigs to create some kind of super assassin. Killing machines. That makes sense. You're smarter, faster, stronger. No wonder Jeffries wanted to keep it quiet. Silas had successfully completed two assassinations before Big Brother scrapped the project. But they kept him in a safe house for the last four years, trying to figure out what to do with him. Like a caged animal waiting to break out. Yeah, well, that happened three nights ago when he blew in here and stole the files to figure out who did this to him. And now he's destroying them. But why would he take his victims somewhere else to kill him? To teach them a lesson. A lesson? Matt, the gunpowder. Camp 7 was a military facility. The Red Room, an old munitions dump. He was killing them where they killed him. It's been a long night, George, if you're not up to this. It's all right, Matthew. For me, this place is just a memory. For Silas. Three, stop it now. Prepare your weapons. Take aim. Fire. No! Are excellent. We found the one. Kill him. Police freeze! Sign us no! It's George. From the camp. Look at me. Look at my face. You know me. Shoot him. 
You are no longer giving the orders in this room. Put the gun down, Silas. George? He ain't doing it, George. Let him. He's a killer! It's not his fault. He's not responsible. Who are you? I am Dart Three. This guy's been programmed for four years, George. You think you're gonna just waltz into his mind now? You are Silas Marner. Who are you? Potwash. Chula. And Pimport. George? I am Dart Three. No! George, I'm not going to let this happen. Thank you. Oh, you will have to support. I'm people. I'm people. Here for my package. Get me out of here! Sorry, Professor. You're not on my shopping list. You know, we could have used your taming powers for the last six months. Silas here has been a most erratic young man. But uh, I'm sure that'll be taken care of now. You're not going to get away with this. Get away with what? We will not let you kill your killing machine and pretend nothing happened. No one's going to be killed. I'm simply going to take Dart Three back where he belongs. No deal. What do you need this for? Why don't we all just walk away? You guys just don't get it, do you? We're just the rats in the maze. Somebody else decides who gets the cheese. You're right, I don't get it. What's it gonna be? Don't look so surprised, Sykes. I get paid to mop up spills, not blood. Anyway, I, uh, I promised the family I'd take them to the movies. I am afraid that you are going to miss your movie. Forget it, George. But we're going to just let him go. It's not worth our time. We pull him in, Big Brother will have him sprung in 20 minutes. We got what we need. Gentlemen. Jeffries. <laughs> I want you to give Big Brother a message. You tell him that I will make sure the press finds out about the DART project. But will they print it? Why does this psychological evaluation disturb you so? What are you trying to hide from yourself? What do you fear, detective? <laughs> it's easy to open.
Why? Why won't you open that door? Yeah. 